Now, there's some really amusing stories about Queen Elizabeth II's coronation, and they're in Anne Glenn Connor's book, Lady in Waiting. And anyway, she tells the story very excitedly, and the six handmaidens are waiting for the Queen to arrive at Westminster Abbey. And all the handmaidens have been given tiny little vials of smelling salts, which they were to tuck in their gloves. Or I suppose it would be down into the palm of their gloves, so that if they were taken over by the vapours of <laughs> because the occasion just overwhelmed them, they could crush these little vials of smelling salts, I suppose just delicately sniff and come to again. I guess that was the plan. So they're all waiting excitedly, all these six gorgeous girls near the entrance to the abbey, and of course the archbishop has to come up and say hello to all these six gorgeous girls. And so he comes up and he shakes one of the girl's hands very, very vigorously and enthusiastically. And of course, it broke the vial of smelling salts. So this horrific stench just spread and it went all over the archbishop. And he said, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, what have you done? Oh my goodness, and he went off with all his vestments flapping in a big panic, he would be in a panic because you you can imagine he got out his hanky and he was trying to get it off and because the Queen was about to arrive any moment and that just happened. Well, of course, all the handmaidens were just absolutely hysterically laughing over this <laughs> archbishop who just could not cope with what happened. Anne Glen Connor was actually over in America when she received the, the word that Queen Elizabeth II had asked her to become one of the six handmaidens. So back she dashed back home and there was about 12 official rehearsals before the actual coronation itself. And it's really fun to read that there was nothing glamorous about her experience of the coronation really because she had to sleep on the floor of her uncle's flat the night before the coronation. She didn't get any sleep at all. I mean, imagine how stressful. Just going to read you a very brief passage from Anne Glenn Connor's book just on the coronation, just a few lines because it's wonderful. I encourage you to get this book. It's just great. The pages came forward to open the coach's doors while the Duke of Edinburgh got out of the other side, rushing around all of us, checking that everything was in order and generally being very fussy. <laughs> I think he wanted it to be the most perfect day for the Queen and thought he was helping, but we knew exactly what to do and his frantic behaviour only added to the tension. <laughs> so that amused me because... It doesn't seem like Prince Philip does, does it? And you can tell that on such a grand occasion, the love he had for the Queen and how much he desperately wanted everything to be perfect. And he let it show. And he, at that moment, and he's normally such a cool customer, isn't he? Like he, he never used to show his feelings. He was always, you know, a cool, cool cat about everything, wasn't he? Other than when he used to get quite testy and angry. Talking about Prince Philip losing his temper, there's quite a lovely story about the coronation. After it was finished, they all ended up back at Buckingham Palace and they had to get all the official photographs taken. And the Queen Mother had insisted that Cecil Beaton be the photographer. Now, Prince Philip had wanted someone a little bit more modern, one of his favourite photographers, which probably might have been a good idea, actually. But Cecil Beaton, of course, was a, a favourite of the Queen Mother's, and she loved the fact that he would always take those gorgeous, floaty, fairy sort of pictures of her and also of uh, Princess Elizabeth and Princess Margaret when they were littler. So she won the day against Philip and Cecil Beaton was the official photographer. So they're all lined up and Cecil Beaton's really bossy and he's, and, um, he's sort of saying, oh, come over here, I'll go there, look here and do it. And Prince Philip was um, interfering. And he was trying to get sort of a better angle or maybe he was just looking for a more modern look or something. But he he went up to where Cecil Beaton was and he actually fiddled with the camera and sort of interfered in quite a way. And Cecil Beaton said, 
basically, well, if you think you can do better, you take the photographs then. And he stormed off, much to <laughs> Queen Elizabeth II and the Queen Mother's horror. Well, you know, peace was restored, the photographs were taken, and all was okay in the end. There's a really cute story about the Queen when she got back from the actual coronation and there was a feeling of relief through the whole party. You could imagine, I mean, after months and months of preparation and planning and rehearsals and I mean it was very difficult because that was all televised which was a coronation televised for the very first time. I mean they had to invent, you know, tech to be able to cover this event. And they had to fit out the Abbey, you know, with lighting rigs and, I mean, it, it was a huge, huge undertaking. So when they get back to Buckingham Palace, the Queen is full of relief and quite gay and young and fun. And uh, so she describes that they had to go down one of those really long, wide corridors at Buckingham Palace to where Cecil Beaton was waiting to photograph everybody. And this is a really cute few lines. The Queen was so full of excitement that she started running. So we all ran with her. Equally, spontaneously, she sat down on a red sofa in the gallery, her dress billowing and settling down all around her. We sat with her. And then she suddenly kicked up her legs for total joy. And we did the same. It was the happiest of moments. And I really, really hope that King Charles III has those moments. I hope that there's happy family, joyful moments and feelings of relief when he gets back after the coronation. And I, you know, I hope it's a party. I hope it's a wonderful, wonderful party. And I hope it's a wonderful party for everybody. And I think that's what we need to focus on now. It's getting, it's getting closer. It's getting closer. And I think we owe it to him, we owe it to the Queen, we owe it to everybody to have that joyous moment be the main focus of the day.